Hey guys, Sean from Living Seeds, your seed guru. Today we're talking about Aphipar, or the real name is Aphidius colmini. So the Aphidius wasp is a, a, it's a species of braconid wasp, and what it does is it parasitizes aphids, which we really enjoy, because as you can see in this tunnel over here, we've got, this is one of eight tunnels, there's 1,500 plants in this tunnel, and we know that there are aphids um, lurking about on our tomato plants and this little guy is really really awesome so let me tell you about the aphidius wasp the aphidius wasp is a tiny little wasp and i'm talking it's like three millimeters long um, one of the first questions we get asked is does the aphidius wasp sting people are we going to get stung and the answer is no this little wasp over here all she wants to do is sting aphids she's not interested in stinging you um, and I've, I've never ever heard of anybody being stung by an aphidius wasp. It just, it just doesn't happen. So that's that one cleared out. So these little wasps are actually quite cool. Um, this vial over here has 500 wasps in it. The nice thing about aphidius wasps is that it has a sex ratio of 2 to 1, which means that um, there's, there's probably 350 uh, close to yeah, about 350 female wasps inside here to male wasps. The females only need to mate once. The males can mate multiple times. The very cool thing is that the female wasp can decide whether she's laying a fertilized egg or an unfertilized egg. And she will, each female will lay about 300 eggs um, in her lifespan. The, the lifespan is about... Um, it's about 10 days. It depends on the temperature. So the warmer it is, the faster the life cycle, the cooler it is, the longer the life cycle. But the female wasp can decide when she's laying the egg, whether she's laying a fertilized egg, which will become another female wasp, or if it needs to be a, a male wasp, which will be an unfertilized wasp, which I think is actually quite cool. Um, and what she does is she actually goes up to, up to the aphid and she has two antenna. And I'm not going to shake these guys around. But what she does is she, she goes up to the wasp and she actually drums the wasp with her antenna. She goes, and she drums on the, on the actual, sorry, the aphid. She goes up to the aphid and she goes on the, on the aphid and she drums on the aphid. And when she drums on the aphid, it, it tells her a whole lot of things about this aphid. It tells her the age of the aphid. Um, it tells her um, if it's the right species of aphid. Um, and it tells her if the aphid has been, it has been, um, if if another wasp has laid an egg in in the aphid as well she's also got another way of testing that when she actually um, puts her stinger into the aphid she can actually taste with the end of her stinger whether it's been fertilized or not so if it's if it's got an egg um, that's still too young she's actually able to taste whether um, an, whether another wasp has actually laid an egg inside the aphid which I think is actually very cool so um, what happens is she lays the egg and, and what she'll do, she'll go up and she'll, and she'll drum on this aphid. She'll work out whether it's large enough, whether it's the right um, species of aphid and whether she can lay an egg inside there. And then within half a second, she can actually whip herself around, sting the aphid, lay an egg inside the aphid and she'll fly off. Now, the really cool thing about the aphidious wasp is that um, they, that they really prefer to attack aphid colonies that are not too large. So what will happen is she'll go up to an aphid colony and if it's a large aphid colony, she won't actually go into the aphid colony because the honeydew that is secreted by these aphids will actually get stuck all over her. Um, and that will prevent her from flying and actually procreating so she actually doesn't go into the aphid colony so she will actually search out um, and, and this is really important at this time of the year where we've got a whole lot of plants we know there's aphids inside here but they pass they they sparsely um, populated throughout this whole tunnel and she'll go out and, just, and she'll search for those individual aphids which is really cool because um, She's really important really early in the season to get a cap on that aphid population before the aphid population becomes established. So she searches out all of these loner aphids, for example. And if you've watched 
our, our AFID video, um, and I'll link to the AFID video over here for you, but she'll, um, she'll go and search out all of these loan aphids that are going to start a new colony, and she'll nip that colony right in the bud. Now, the cool thing is, she can lay an egg inside an aphid basically at any stage. So um, second, third, fourth instar, winged aphids, it doesn't really matter. She'll lay an egg in, in all of those. Um, the aphid mummy, or at least not the aphid mummy, but the, but the aphid larva, it hatches out of the egg and it starts to consume the aphid. The aphid doesn't die immediately. She can live for another, another couple of days, and if she's pregnant, um, like I explained in that video, if she's pregnant, she can still lay babies or um, lay babies. She can still give live birth to babies while she's being eaten up on the inside by this wasp larva. Um, so it's actually quite cool. But then what will happen is the larva will go through all four of its instars and it'll spin a cocoon inside the aphid and that turns the aphid like a golden color. As soon as the wasp is ready to hatch, she eats a little round hole in the rear end of the, of the aphid and the new wasp comes out. So that process takes anywhere between 10 and, um, if it's really cold, if it's like 10 degrees outside, it can take up to 40 days for that process to happen. If it's nice and warm, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, it'll go from egg to adult in just 10 days. So it's all very much temperature dependent. And what I'm going to show you now is a picture of a cabbage leaf that has aphids on it, aphid mummies on it. And if you look over here, this is an aphid mummy that is an empty husk where a wasp has actually exited and starts the life cycle again. So on Living Seeds Farm, we basically have, if it's not too cold a winter, we have a permanent population of these aphidious wasps on the farm. But inside these tunnels over here, we will release aphidious wasps. We'll release them for a minimum of four times every two weeks. So this is our first release of aphidious wasps. And we'll be releasing it from now every two weeks. Um, until we are 100% sure that we have no aphids inside this tunnel. So the next question is, what species of aphids do the aphidious wasps attack? So currently it's known to attack about 40 species of, of aphids. Um, the most common aphids that it's used for is the greenhouse aphid, the green peach aphid. Um, we know that they attack the, the black bean aphid. It was something that they weren't sure about. We've actually proved it on Living Seeds Farm, where we've got pictures of the aphidious wasp attacking the black bean aphid. Um, and I'll put a picture up for you to have a look at. And yeah, so the nice thing is that these guys will hunt out all of the aphids inside this tunnel, inject an egg into them and actually solve our problem for us. So what we're going to do now is we are going to set up um, this this tube of um, aphidious wasps and there's a whole lot of aphidious wasps inside here that are ready to be released. It's very simple. All you do is you peel this back like this and we will attach it to one of these wires over here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to one of our, our poles over here so we can get some footage of the wasps exiting. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll move it up, but we, we can't get our camera all the way up there. So I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do a cheat for you guys, just so you can see what's happening. Okay, so I've attached it to the pole over here and I'm about to remove the cap. And what we are going to see is a whole of little wasps. And I mean, check how tiny they are. There's my finger over there. Okay, that is literally how tiny these wasps are. They look like miniature ants. They're actually that small. So what's happening is now these guys are all flying out and they are going to do a seek and destroy mission inside this tunnel um, and basically seek out all of the, the aphids in this tunnel, lay eggs inside the aphids and solve our aphid problem over here. So each female wasp, I mean, look at this little girl over here. Oh, there she's got a an aphid mummy it's still attached to her she's trying to get rid of it so she can fly so each female aphidious wasp can lay up to 300 eggs 
And it's important to understand that the aphidious wasp life, life cycle at its best is 10 days. So what will happen is in, in 10 days time, um, we will get, if we're lucky in 10 days time, we will get our next generation of aphidious wasps. What happens in those 10 days, we've still got aphids that are producing new aphids. So there's a, 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 a at minimum a 10 day lag, we work on a 15 to 20 day lag between generations, which is why we're releasing every two weeks. And um, even though these guys are going out to go and sting aphids, the aphids are, are reproducing as well. So you need to make sure that you do multiple releases to keep the aphids in check, because as cool as these guys are, it's not a magic wand. You have to step up the, up, up the game to ensure that the aphids actually don't outcompete these little wasps. So, as you can see, well, there we go, this is how we hang them inside our tunnel. And what happens is um, there's at least 500 um, aphid, aphid mummies inside there that contain little wasps. And they will, they will hatch over the next two days or so. So it's not a good idea to sprinkle them out. Um, on the garden and the reason why is that you you have ants in your garden and the ants will actually pick up the aphid mummies and eat them and it's it's a very expensive meal for an ant in your garden guys thank you very much for watching i really really appreciate it if you uh, would like to subscribe please subscribe over here we have tons of content like this that helps you in the garden to be successful thank you guys